when you get there, um, hold your place there, put a finger, put a bookmark, put something there, and turn to Luke chapter number 11. Luke chapter number 11. And I want to read um, a companion passage of Scripture from each of these two Gospels. And uh, when, you, when you find the same thing recorded in more than one Gospel, it is called synoptic, meaning seeing together. Uh, it is not meant to be identically worded. It's, not, it's two vantage points of a single event or, or uh, occurrence. Uh, but God uses different um, instruments, by that I mean biblical writers, to put down a different view of it or a different vantage point of it to help increase uh, our understanding. And so I'll broaden out after we read the initial passages. But in uh, chapter 11 of the book of Luke, the Bible says uh, in verse 34... The light of the body is the eye, therefore when thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If thy whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light." And then don't lose your place there. We will come back in just a moment. But go over to Matthew chapter number 6 with me. Or excuse me, Matthew chapter yeah, 6. I'm in the wrong spot here. Verse number 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. <clears throat> Father, I pray that you would help us to both rightly discern or divide the scriptures and then make application that will be helpful and useful to us uh, in uh, our Christian life. God, I pray that it would deepen our appreciation for your word as well as ignite a, a fire within us to keep our eyes on you. And God, I pray that all of this would be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. These two passages, very similar in what they're saying. Uh, the context of each or that which is going on around these verses is different in both uh, in uh, Matthew from Luke. If you're back in Matthew chapter number six, uh, you'll see that he says in verse number 19, lay not up. Uh, for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, the, where thieves break through steel, but lay up your treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, verse 21, there shall your heart be also. And then in verse number 24, he talks about uh, no man can serve two masters. You'll love the one and hate the other. Uh, you can't love God and mammon. Uh, take no thought for your life. Consider the lilies. They don't toil or spin. And God takes care of them. And couched in the middle of this, the Bible says, the light of the body is the eye. Uh, if therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. <clears throat> and then uh, go with me back over to Luke chapter number 11. Uh, Luke chapter 11. And the verses we read were in verse um, 34 uh, down through verse 36. And notice that before that, verse number 29, he is uh, talking about uh, the, the, the fact that Jesus condemned the generation that he was speaking to, saying it's an evil generation because they seek for a sign. And he said, uh, okay, there's a generation in the past that uh, Jonah was assigned to them. Uh, but that generation is gone and there's one that is greater than Jonah here. And then... Uh, he, he says, uh, uh, talks about the Ninevites and how they would have, have uh, repented and they would stand in judgment because uh, the 
because there was one greater than Jonah, and yet they were looking for more of a sign. And so uh, it's an evil generation, he said. Jonah was assigned to the Ninevites, verse 30. Uh, the queen of the south in Solomon's day uh, shall rise up in judgment because um, she came from a great distance to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And Jesus says there's one greater than Solomon that is standing before you. So greater than Solomon, greater than, than uh, the prophet Jonah. And the Lord Jesus Christ is referring to himself when he says, uh, uh, behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Behold, a greater than Solomon is here. And uh, he taps, uh, uh, caps that off by saying that a man, no man puts, a, when he has uh, uh, lighted a candle, put it in a secret place or neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, they which come in may see the light. And then he goes into the light of the body is the eye. Uh, verse 36, take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness. And then after uh, verse 36, uh, a, a Pharisee uh, asked him to come and eat in his house. And, and we uh, remember the account that when Jesus went there. But <clears throat> the context or what's happening around the two very similar statements uh, is... It, what it, I wanted you to see that it's that they're different for this reason, and just for us to compare and contrast with these two, what Jesus was doing. You say, well, wait, wait a minute. Did did which one is right? Well, the answer is both are right. Uh, Jesus is teaching, and as he's teaching, he uses this uh, illustration of the light of the body is the eye to drive home a principle, and that is that he wants you to make sure that you don't miss what he's saying. And you say, well, he says two different things. Well, if all the things that Jesus said and did were recorded, there would not be room in the libraries of the earth to contain the volumes. So it is, it is no hard stretch for us to understand that Jesus was teaching many times and could have used this illustration more than once or he could have been teaching about many things the day he used that illustration. Matthew records some of the things he taught. Luke records other things that he taught. And, uh, and so the, the same statement recorded for us. And so now I want to look at what was Jesus saying. He's using this illustration, the light of the body is the eye. Light Light is a powerful force. Light is a powerful force. We're told, we're told that we are to walk in the light as he is in the light. And if we do that, we, uh, we have fellowship one with another um, and with, with God, amen? Our, truly our fellowship is with God the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. And so we are told to walk in the light, but light is a powerful force. I remember... Uh, reading, and I, I think uh, I remember also that it even this uh, event or these things even showed up on one of those shows where they go back and try to prove or disprove things, and and I don't remember what, don't what they're called, but anyway, supposedly they said, well, this probably couldn't have happened, but we're not 100 percent sure. Uh, but 200 years before the time of Christ, uh, the Roman uh, armies were uh, trying to conquer parts of Sicily, I believe it was, and uh, they, see, they set siege to a city of Syracuse, uh, Syracuse. Uh, not the one where the college is, but anyway, uh, over in Sicily. And, and so the ships that the Romans were coming on uh, were, uh, it, it was, they, they set up a blockade, basically, of this city that you know would be similar to what the British attempted to do off the uh, eastern coast of the colonies at the day in back in the day, 
uh, to keep goods from coming in and going and, you know, people from getting out and things like that. And so they, the Romans had set up this, this blockade, uh, a siege of this city of Syracuse. And there was this mathematician slash inventor uh, named uh, Ar Archimedes. And Archimedes, it is reported that he developed a, a, a weapon uh, that some had called, um, well, I'm trying to think of, some, of what they called it, but it'll come to me in just a minute, the, the heat ray, the heat ray. And it used a bunch of mirrors or reflective surfaces to reflect light and focus and concentrate light. Now, um, I guess my illustration of that, uh, growing up, you know, uh, many, many years ago um, as a boy, there was no confusion. I was assigned that at my birth, and, I, and, it, was, and it stuck, and so... Uh, I mean, there's no confusion about that. But uh, how we would take a magnifying glass to focus sunlight to set things on fire. And uh, sometimes it was just, you know, some paper or things like that. And, uh, but Archimedes had said that he used a, 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 a bunch of reflective surfaces to focus light and focused it on the Roman ships and actually set the Roman ships on fire uh, in, the, in the harbor with the heat ray that, that he developed. Um, we have a good example of something, not, not by reflective surfaces, really, but uh, in our own uh, uh, landmark of the, the lighthouse up at Split Rock. And the Fresnel lens, if you've ever been up there and heard and read about the Fresnel lens, that uh, this man named Fresnel, by, by using the refractive lenses of, and reflect, refracting light, I mean, you think about it, the light in that lighthouse was not very bright. But it is said that Fresnel developed a series of reflective surfaces in that lens that focused and intensified the light to where it could be seen as far away as the curvature of the earth would allow. In other words, light travels in a, you know, a beam of light travels in a straight line. The curve of the earth, you know, goes down. And so eventually you get down past the curve of the earth. And so, you know, light's going to be, you know, going straight and you won't be able to see it. But it is said that that Fresnel lens, and that's, that's an example of a Fresnel lens, I believe, up in that lighthouse. Uh, it's a, an example of reflecting light to focus its power uh, in a beam uh, that can be seen uh, a long ways away. And, and I know experience, experiments have been done focusing light from uh, different universities from either you know, distances of between 1 and 400 feet and started things on fire. Uh, it is, light is a powerful uh, element. And in the Christian life, light is so critically important that Jesus said, as he was teaching, he would stop and say, the light of the body is the eye. Now, Jesus is not trying to teach a biology lesson, but what he is saying is so true that it is by our eye that we perceive light. It is the only way that light enters into us in a perceptive way. We, have, we, we hear with our ears, but our ears do not perceive light. We can't see with our ears. We, uh, through the, the sense of touch, uh, our skin uh, gives us information but we cannot perceive light through our skin. And so uh, we perceive it through the eye. The eye, and so the eye is the avenue whereby light enters into, as we would say it, think about it in non-scientific terms, it, the, it enters into our body. Now, what that means is, if you do not have sight, your whole world is dark. 
It's not just that, okay, well, I've lost my sight. No, no, you live in a darkened world because there's no other way for you to perceive light. So much so that blind people have, and I forget what the, the condition is called, the phenomenon is called, but, but they, they don't have a sense of day and night. And so, I mean, the, it's the same to them. And so they, the people that, that care for blind people struggle with the fact that, you know, this, it's, it's the same to a blind person. They could be up working uh, in the middle of the night and not know it's the middle of the night because the night and the day are the same to them. Light is, a, is, is an important, not just a powerful force, but it is in, an important force in our life. And so that's why the body says, uh, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, if thy eye be single, the whole body is full of light. Now, what does it, what does it mean when it says, if thine eye be single? The only two places in the entire Bible that I could find that the Greek word for single here is found is in the passage in Matthew 6 and here. Not found anywhere else in the scriptures, to my knowledge. But you can tell a lot from the context because your eye can be single or it can be what? Evil. If thine eye be evil, uh, in verse number 34 of Luke, Luke 11, if thine eye be evil, thy body is also full of darkness. Now, the scriptures here are not trying to use evil in the sense of wickedness, but evil in the sense of not doing what is designed to do. The idea of single has the idea of um, it's, it's operating properly, all right? I would say it this way, the eye needs to focus properly. You know, these things that we, you know, that God knew we would need these. You know how I know he knew it? Because he put a nose on our face to hold them up. But uh, <laughs> just thought I'd see if some of y'all were awake. Amen. Uh, and, but, uh, but these come in handy when your eyes do not focus as they should. It has to do with the muscles of the eye, the shape uh, and the muscles in your eye adjust and change the distance from the lens back into your eye. It adjusts that like adjusting a telescope when you are, a, a, okay, guys, a scope. What it's really doing is adjusting the distance between lenses to bring things into focus. And your eye does that. It's, a, it's an amazing creation of God. And when you get old, that eye doesn't... You know, it's not as uh, elastic as it used to be, and it can't adjust like it used to adjust. And you get a pair of these to make the adjustment for you. What's it doing? It's making your eye single or focused or operating the way it's supposed to operate. And if your eye is not working properly, your life, it's the light of the body is the eye. It's the way that light enters into you. It is how you perceive the world around you uh, in, through vision. And so uh, if that's not true, then, it, then your life, your body is full of darkness. Because without sight, if your eye be evil or does not work the way it's supposed to, then your life is filled with darkness. Now that's the physical illustration of a spiritual reality or truth. And what Jesus is saying there is not saying go to, you know, you know, optometrist of Jerusalem and get your eyes checked. He was saying spiritually, don't miss what the scriptures are teaching you. Don't miss what I am teaching you. Whatever it is, whether it's in Matthew uh, about laying up treasure in heaven or whether it's in Luke about uh, uh, that uh, you're looking for a sign, but Jesus said he is the sign, uh, that he was the sign that would, that would be given. And so uh, there shall no sign be given, but the sign of Jonas the prophet, he says in verse number 29, he, uh, he talks about 
uh, Nineveh standing up and condemning them because they're looking for another sign. And they have the greatest sign that you could ever have, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. How is Jesus Christ a sign? He's a sign because of his virgin birth, his sinless life, and because of what he taught. He, was, he is the sign. The Bible says, uh, behold, I, 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 he, I'm going to give you a sign that there's going to be a virgin that's going to give birth to a child. Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of all the messianic prophecy. And so Jonah's, Jonah's prophecy pales in comparison to the fulfillment of prophecy in Jesus Christ. The wisdom of Solomon is nothing compared to the wisdom that is in Jesus Christ. And so he's saying, don't miss the who's standing in front of you. Don't miss that this is the, the revelation of God to man. Don't miss that I am the Son of God, the Savior of the world. Don't miss that. Don't miss that what I'm saying to you, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Because if your eye, your spiritual eye is working, it's going to fill your life with the light of God. But if you are somebody that cannot see it, if your spiritual eyesight is not working, you're going to fill your life with darkness. And that's what he means, I believe, when he says back in Matthew, I don't want to misquote it, I, I, I've, I'm already struggling to properly quote a few verses but notice back in Matthew verse 23 if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness how great is that darkness if that's as good as your vision gets spiritually you are doomed the Bible says he that hath an ear to hear he that eyes has, has eyes to see let him see you see when, when uh, oh, one of the many times I've been to an eye doctor, um, my vision, the last time I remember having it checked, is 2200. I'm nearsighted. Who gasped? <laughs> you, <laughs> you don't want me driving without my glasses, Okay. Uh, it's 2200 it might be worse now I don't know but the last time I remember um, and I said now doc and I just called them all doctor I, I don't have to remember their name that way I said now doc what does that really mean 2200 he said well basically it means that what a nor person with normal vision can see at 200 feet You've got to be 20 feet to see it as clearly as they see it. And I said, <clears throat> okay, well, is that bad? He said, if that was your corrected vision, in other words, if 2200 was as good as we could get your eyes with correction, you would be listed and considered legally blind. <laughs> I said, I think I'll take the glasses now. <laughs> but with glasses... But, but listen, if, if that's as good as you can get is darkness, if the light in you be darkness, how great is that darkness? If a, if a man is so spiritually blind that he cannot see the light of God's word, how great is that darkness? You've probably had the experience as, as I did growing up as we would uh, get to travel a little bit, you know, you stop and you know, you see those signs down south, you know, the ca such and such a caverns. And, and uh, they do the same thing at all of those. They get you down in the cavern in a big, uh, you know, open area. They say now either sit down or hold on to a railing or something. And, and they don't, don't panic and hope you don't have a heart attack or anything like that. And they shut off the lights. And you are deep enough in the earth that there is no light source down there. And you literally, you know, people, everybody does it. I keep waiting for them to turn the light off. And then instead of leaving it off for like, you know, a few minutes, just in 10 seconds, turn it back on. I think they would see the entire crowd, a few hundred people, all of them doing this. Because <laughs> like they say, you can't see the hand in front of your face, but you got to try it. And I'm sure as the light, as soon as the light goes off, everybody just goes. And so they turn it back on, everybody be... <laughs> 
you know, and, and just snap a picture at that time, you know, just, you know, this group picture of a few hundred people going. <laughs> but if that's, as, listen, how great, that's a, that is, that is a darkness that is hard to define and hard to explain, is it not? If you've had that experience, that is utter darkness. And God is saying, Jesus is saying, if the best you can see is darkness, how great is that darkness? The Bible says in Corinthians that the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of those who are lost, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine in to their hearts. You know what the devil doesn't want the lost man to do? He doesn't want him to see the light. He doesn't want him to uh, be able to perceive the light of God's word and the light of who Jesus is. And the Bible says, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And then when he left, he passed that light on to you and to me. How, how great it is, how important it is that the light of the body is the eye. Our spiritual eye needs to be able to see the light of God's word so that it will fill our life with light. And what a, what a listen, uh, if you ever lost your sight and then somehow at a later time regained it, boy, you would be filled with joy. I don't know, uh, several years ago, somebody asked me a question. Well, if you had to lose something, you know, what would you rather use? Lose. Lose the ability to walk, lose the ability to use your hands, or, or lose your eyesight. And boy, I tell you what, I didn't pick eyesight, I'll tell you that. Because you can do a lot without walking, you can do some without uh, using your hands, but without, without your eyes, boy, everything gets really difficult. And so, what then do we take away from this? The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, focused, it's functioning the way it should. Thy whole body is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body is also is full of darkness. Take heed, therefore. And, here, and when Jesus, you don't have to wonder why Jesus is using this parallel. Because here in Luke 11, he tells us, take heed, watch out, pay attention. What does he say take heed for? Therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. Make sure that what you're seeing is real. There are, there are examples and illustrations of people that have lost their eyesight and their eyes have been damaged beyond repair. But they often have tried to, in examining them, They'll put a bright light in front of them and say, now tell us if you can, when you can see the light. And they imagine that they're seeing light. And I remember several years ago watching a, a documentary on the subject and I don't even know why, it was, why I watched it and even where I was, but it's been, when I say several years, that could be anywhere from, you know, 1960 when I was born. <laughs> Up until probably uh, last week, I don't know. It just it's it's a long time ago, uh, in my mind. But I remember when they were doing that, and they told this person that they were examining, "Let us know when you can, if you can see any light," and they didn't turn the light on. They just did something that made a clicking sound, and they said, oh, "I think I see a little bit of light." I, I think I can see a little bit of motion. I think I can see a little bit of shadow. And there was no light in the room. But they thought that they were seeing some light. I believe that's what Jesus, that illustrates what Jesus is talking about. That if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? How important it is for us to understand that we need the light of God's word. We need in our life the light of Jesus Christ so that we are walking not in darkness, but walking in the light. 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. And verse number 5. 1 John 1 and verse 
Verse number five, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. We read those verses, we say amen and amen, but don't miss something here that we can maybe consider having brought us up to this point for the last half an hour. Okay, 40 minutes. But anyway, notice what it says. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. There are those who say that they walk in fellowship with God, but they're walking in darkness. What's going on? I believe that what's going on is that the light in them is darkness. And if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? That they are so spiritually blind that they think they're seeing light. But it's, it's, it's utter darkness. It, they imagine themselves to know truth. They imagine themselves to be right with God. But it is not so because it is not true light. It comes only from God. I wrote down just a few things to help us. If our eye be single to get our focus, where should our eyes be focused? Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse number 2. I won't belabor these three thoughts and then we'll be done. Hebrews Chapter number 12 and verse number 2, looking unto Jesus. Where are we supposed to be focused our sight on? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Oh, listen, we're supposed to be looking unto Christ. And then James chapter number 1 James chapter 1, verse number, the pages are sticking together, verse number 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Looking unto Jesus, looking unto the perfect law of liberty, the word of God, amen. And then Titus Titus chapter 2 and verse number 13. These are just three thoughts that I jotted down in my office just before service tonight. Where should we be focusing our vision, our sight? Titus chapter 2 and verse number 13, looking for that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Looking for that blessed hope. That's, that's seeing light. We live <clears throat> in a very dark world, our our scripture reading from tonight uh, talked about, about the light and the, how important it is that we actually let ourselves perceive the light of God because the light of the body, is, as the light of the body is the eye, so we perceive truth through the word of God. Jesus said, don't miss what I'm saying to you. Because if the light that is in you is darkness, there is no greater darkness. How great is that darkness? And so we are commanded to be single in our vision, focused in our vision. And I, I would not do what I'm supposed to do if I didn't say, focus your vision on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of your faith. 
Focus your vision on the perfect law of liberty. And then focus your vision on the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior. Archimedes is said to have focused a light ray so intensely that it caused ships to catch on fire. Fresnel developed lenses that refracted light and intensified light to where it could be seen as far as as visible eye could see something. These are nothing compared to the power of the light of God. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Jesus did not try to hide the light. He came that he might give light. And you and I are recipients of that if we know Jesus Christ as our Savior. But make sure, make sure that the light that is in you is not darkness. Make sure that it's genuine. Make sure that it's real, a matter of the heart. Make sure uh, that it is, it is not fictitious or fake or, or images. You know, our minds are an amazing part of God's creative work. So much so that someone can describe some, some scene to you. And your mind can create pictures within your mind that you, of things that you've never seen. They may not be 100% accurate, but visions, images in your head. And if we're not careful, growing up in God's house, hearing the truth of God's word, can create images in our, in our mind that are not genuine. They're, they're, we've never truly trusted Jesus Christ. I, you, I, if you know me at all, you know that I do not set out to cause anyone to doubt their salvation. But I would say, make sure that you know. Make sure that you know. And if, you're, and if you don't, 100% know that you've trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Don't play with it. Because if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Father, I pray that you would help us to keep our focus upon our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we would look into the perfect law of liberty, that we would Look unto the coming of the Lord Jesus as he returns for us. Lord, to keep our focus clear, sharp, and that light continues to go into us and fill our life with light. God, I pray that we would have great joy and rejoicing because of the light that you've given us. God, I pray that, as the Bible says, if if we let that light go into us, then our whole body is full of light. How important it is that we be filled with your light. God, I pray that we would walk in that light and do all we can to respond to it. Because really, that's the evidence that I, I cut off a little short tonight and didn't get to. The evidence that someone can see light is they react to what they perceive. If they have sight and there is something moving towards them at a, where it's going to impact them, they, they move, they duck, they respond to it. And God, if we have spiritual sight, it can be known because we respond to the things that we see from the Word of God. We respond positively to the things that are going on in the world because they let us know that, that you're in control God, as we have our vision be single, functioning, working, our spiritual vision, God, we will respond to the truth of your word. We will respond to the moving of the Holy Spirit. We will, re will respond to the wickedness that is in the world by separating from it. God, when supposedly Christian people do not react in a, in a horrified way at the wickedness that is in the world. I have to ask, 
Is the light in, in them really darkness? God, I pray that you would help us to walk in the light. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed as we stand to our feet and the instruments begin.